Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review where I start reviewing the Mad Max films. And I've been wanting to do this for a while because I've not seen the Mad Max films in a long time, and of course I know the new one is has been out for a while, so I wanted to give it another look. Um, so months and months, months back, I picked up the Mad Max films. And of course we get to this. Now, when I picked this up as well before, well, well before, I said months, but I think it was longer than that. There's a new collector's edition from Screen Factory, which actually has an interview with Mel Gibson, which I would be curious about that, just to hear what Mel Gibson has to say about the film. I mean, I don't know when I'll ever get it. If I'll ever get it, I mean, just to buy a Blu-ray just for one interview is seems pretty pointless. And even this DVD had features: Mel Gibson, The Birth of a Superstar documentary, Mad Max: The Film Phenomenon documentary. I think they're on that Stream Factory Blu-ray trailers. Commentary: John Dodding, David Edby, Chris Murray, and Tim Ridge. Trivia and fun fat track TV spots. Mad Max is a film, about a 1979 film, directed by George Miller. Brian May did the music, did a pretty decent job. And I didn't go to a lot of info on behind the scenes, but honestly, if you go on Wikipedia or the trivia on IMDb or something, you'll find a lot of info on the film. <clears throat> My friend Mike, OCP Communications, he did great reviews on these where he put a lot of info into them. I'm just going to give my thoughts on these. And Mad Max, I've never been a big fan of this film. Now, I don't hate the film. This is not going to be a rant. Uh, at best, it's a time waster for me. I respect what the film did. And because of the success, a lot of people copied Mad Max and said, hey, we got to have our own Mad Max. This post-apocalyptic film dealing with cars and some I will say the positives Mel Gibson even in this early state of his career shows that he had a star presence there's a reason why he became a movie star he's got charisma to him and even really none of the acting is the problem uh, you have his buddy who, whose name's Goose which just makes me think of Top Gun because it's uh, a friend of the lead character who gets fucked up so don't be named Goose in a movie or you get fucked up. The villain character named Toad Cutter. None of the acting is a problem. I know when they released this in the US they dubbed because the Australian accent is too much I guess for Americans. I don't understand that shit. But I th because I like Mel Gibson. The score is pretty decent, especially the love thing between Mel Gibson and his woman, Matt. I'm gonna say Matt Max, but Max is Max Rocketani's woman. Some pretty decent stunt work. Some on accident. For example, the guy sliding on the bike and the back of the wheel hit the guy on the back of the head. Thankfully, he had a helmet on. The opening scene, there's a pursuit of a cop killer, and you have some pretty good stunt work. You have a car going through this van, <clears throat> this near miss with this kid on the road, uh, one going through this camper as they're chasing this person called the Night Rider. I'm a fuel injected suicide machine. I'm a, the Night Rider. I like that scene, and then you only see Mads and little glimpses on the rear view mirror, or the, I should say the side view mirror. I should just little bits of the mirror. Just see his eyes, sunglasses on, and then he chases the Night Rider, able to hit him from the back, get into this wreckage explosion. You get like a split second where you see the Night Rider's eyeballs budding out. This is a nice way to set up the film. It's 
it's just the rest of the film is kind of eh, kind of boring to me kind of tedious to me especially when you're watching the same night as the road warrior and such I mean after that it pretty much slows down until a nice little bit at the end of the film I know that's it's not supposed to be an action driven action a minute flick and that's why I don't hate the film it's alright but you need a little bit of love between the two characters Max and his woman the bad guys chase this couple, fuck up their car, get the idea that maybe they raped the girl or at least brutalized her. She's still alive, but they arrest, they find one person, arrest him. He's got to be let go. The guy wants revenge on Goose, Mel Gibson's buddy, and stuff happens to him. He flies off a motorcycle, gets into this truck, the truck gets crashed. The one guy doesn't want to lie, but Tokar says, no, come on, lie, who the hell do you think you are, you pussy? Doesn't say that, but makes it light it, catches on fire. Mel Gibson has a good reaction, seeing that his friend is burnt to toast. Yeah, that thing in there, that's not the goose. Max quits. Some lovey-dovey scenes with his girl. Like, sign language, sign language about, I'm crazy about you. The girl gets chased through the woods, she gets her baby back from these guys, this old woman helps, and they chase the woman, Max's girl carrying the baby, and they get run over. And I swear, the 2004 Punisher must have looked at this movie, because it plays off exa almost exactly the same. Where you have a woman with a kid running, they get run over, and then you have the hero Almost in the same did a white t-shirt, running, and has a gun, a rifle. The two, I swear, it's almost like they saw this film, the 2004 Punisher movie, saw this film and go, oh, we gotta do like that scene. So, oh, wow. It does remind me of that. And then goes for revenge. And the revenge, for me, is not the most satisfying revenge. Gets his interceptor, his car, cool. Get the bad guys to chase him. This, I mean, pretty much he just turns around, runs towards them, it cuts away. You see a couple fly off a bridge into the water. At least I, th I think water. I thought it was water. And that's where you get the decent bit where a guy gets hit in the back with his own motorcycle. Which I'm sure was on ads then, because it's a very dangerous thing to do. You have one scene where he sh gets his arm run over by someone on a motorcycle. He's able to shoot the guy off the motorcycle. He gets toe cutter by running him into a truck, but bouncing his vehicle. Then he hits a truck. Great scene. I mean, I will say that looks great. But it's weird that he's the last one to die, the main villain, Toe Cutter. The last one to die is the guy they arrested before. And I'm thinking, why is the movie picking this guy to be the last guy to die? Is it, is it the movie trying to go, oh, well, when they arrested the guy before, it was Goose that wanted him, and Max is the one holding him back. Now, Max is not holding him back in this instance. Or is it we have the audience see that this guy hesitated, didn't want to kill Goose, but it was Toe Carter that said yes. And now Matt's is, he doesn't give a shit. Either way, whatever happened, doesn't know what happened, doesn't care. Or I'm looking too much to when they said, fuck it, you know, this is the guy they arrested before, just have him killed last. I like the scene. Puts his chain of handcuffs on his ankles and ties it cuffs him to this place and he goes the chain of those handcuffs is high tensile steel take you about 10 minutes to hack through it with this if you're lucky though you can, you can hack through your ankle in 5 minutes pretty much leaves the guy you see an explosion in the background matches on to his merry way and that's really the film that's what I mean the film is 
not much to run home about. Obviously, they're working on a low budget, so it's not... It's a post-apocalyptic future, but you're not going to see a lot of big sets. The cars are okay. They're, for the most part, the cop cars are yellow, which I just sort of an ugly color to me for a cop car. I, I like the way the car looks in the sequel more, the Interceptor. <clears throat> Again, Mel Gibson, he's charismatic, he's got a presence to him. The the other acting is alright. The score by Brian Mays, I prefer his score in the second film. It just... Other than a couple stunt scenes, it seems like not much happens in the movie. I mean, it's not too long of a movie. It's a 90-some minute film. But again, when you compare it to the sequel, and the sequel I saw first, and I saw it for the longest time, and didn't even know there was a first Mad Max film. I just thought there was the Road Warrior, and that was it. And then Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. They said, oh yeah, there's a previous one. Really? So I remember when I first saw it, I was being pretty disappointed. And, oh wow, there's, okay, there's a couple decent stunts like the stuff I said, but I could probably count on one hand. And again, the revenge for me wasn't that satisfying. I think it's the same thing happened to me with Death Wish, where I saw Death Wish 3 the most as a kid, and then I see the first one and I go, eh, eh. And that's not always the case. I mean, I saw Rambo 2 a lot, and Rambo 3, and then I saw First Blood, and I'm like, I still love First Blood. It's just, I guess I'm more of the Road Warrior guy than the first film, Mad Max guy. That's why I'm not sure if I'm going to pick up the Blu-ray, because if I'm not in yeah, about the film, I'm not picking up a Blu-ray just to see one interview for Mel Gibson, unless I found it really cheap. I mean, I respect what the film did. I respect what the film influenced. But I don't get the pure cinematic poetry from Time Magazine. I just think it's a film that's eh, all right at most, kind of boring, and it's a film I don't really see myself watching much, if ever, again. I mean, I'm fine with having it for the collection, for the Mad Max films, but just, I know it's not much of a review, but it's, I'm sure a lot, I know a lot of people will disagree with me. I just always found this film kind of boring, kind of tedious. And again, there's a couple of cool stunt work with the cars, but I've seen a lot of movies that have a lot more, and they're also pretty decent. I mean, hell, I saw a film the other day, The Man from Hong Kong, that has a lot of stunt work with cars and other stuff. It's there, but I'm... I'd be lying if I said I was a big fan of it. Because I'm not. And, yeah, I just. Never been a huge fan of this first movie. If it didn't have Mel Gibson in it, like if it has some other. Some. I know the guy's an asshole. He fucked up. But hey, people fuck up. It was many years ago. And I'm not going to apologize for what he did, because he did fuck up, and it wasn't right what he said, and the stupid shit he said. But, you know, people do fuck up. I still like him as a movie star. I didn't used to for a while, but I'm like, you know what? Watching films like this, there was a reason why I became a movie star. As a person, he fucked up. But as a movie star, if he wasn't in this, I probably would not have gone through it. I would have fast-forwarded Oh, here's a cool stunt. Fast forward some more. But I didn't fast forward. So I know it's not much review, but it's the best I could do. Because there's really not much else to it. You get a little bit of lovey-dovey scene, which is alright. You get a revenge that eh, I, I think could have been better or could have been more crazy or 
more mad. Like, for example, when he has the high tensile steel that handcuffs the guy by his ankles to the car, maybe more stuff like that, but he's not the Punisher. He's the Mad Max, I understand. But I'm not being too mad, no pun intended, mad about it. Because I understand, I'm sure they had a very low budget to work with, so it wasn't some big budget, $100 million Hollywood film. So I did give credit for what they did. But anyway, I'm just repeating myself again and again and again, so I'll just end it here. <clears throat> I have more to say with this film, The Road Warrior which is my favorite Mad Max film and to be honest the only one that I truly enjoy and for a while I always thought eh, you know is it really that great watch it again today yes it is that great and I will let you know why so thanks for watching take care later